My daughter, I raised her that she's not going to go to a man for survival. She's not going to go to a man to get a car. Hey Revolution Gang, welcome back to our headquarters. If you haven't yet subscribed, make sure you click the subscribe button down below and join the revolution. So as you guys can see, I am not alone. I am sitting here with my dad. Honestly guys, he and I have like the same personality. So like if you see me and I'm all bubbly, he's like times 100,000. <laughs> like father, like daughter. <laughs> So before we get started, I just want to give a post notification shout out to Slimo. Thank you so much for all your love and support for my channel. So guys, in today's video, I am going to be asking my dad some questions that you guys sent me. And the whole point of it is asking um, my dad questions that you guys have for men and for, you know, father figures in your life and stuff. And before we start this video, I just want to say that one man cannot speak for all men. So this is in accordance to his experience and what he knows of his environment, whatever environment that may be over his life, but it will not represent every single single man out there if you have a differing opinion then add it in the comments and let's talk about it the first question is okay it's a three-part question mm -hmm. I'm 22 this year my dad is really protective as in he has an angry face when he sees me with a guy how on earth do I break it to him that I'm in a relationship for almost two years and my mom knows everything she met him and everything but my dad doesn't know how do i let him know well um firstly all dads are protective um the extent of being protective differs but i think it's your dad uh, he's not a lion he is your dad and he loves you what you need to do wait for the time timing is very important in everything wait for the time where is he is at happiest self and um, use that opportunity, maybe icebreaker about just life in general, and then use that opportunity um, to break the news. It will definitely not kill you. I think what probably won't be helpful, it's if you make it known that your mother knew already. So the whole let it not be known that your mom knew, like why is that? Is it like because it's hurtful or? You know, sometimes as men, we've got our own fears that maybe you are conniving and so on and so on. We also want to be seen to be involved throughout our children. So you, you don't want to be seen to be talking to your children through your wife. You want to be seen to be talking to your children directly. Yeah, so. I think that's actually a pretty solid advice, which is like, you know, just sit down and tell the truth. This also depends on your age. You know, your age is a big component in this. But if you are especially of age and you find that maybe your parents are just, or your, your dad is still just latching onto you despite your age, then, you know, go and speak maturely, but also know your business. So don't go there and fumble and say, uh, you know, where is he from? Uh, I think, I think, like, you must go there yeah. and know your business. Yeah. And if you're telling your dad, like, obviously, you must be serious about it. It's been two years. So yeah. I would say just have your story straight and tell the yeah. truth and then if he looks like he wants to hit you just run really nigga do dads also have a favorite child that's yeah they do because i'm the favorite i'm my dad's favorite guys <laughs> what is this <laughs> favorite <laughs> you see he's not denying don't tell anyone <laughs> she is the only girl and no one touches her <laughs> And she spoiled. Uh, what's interesting with Benita, if she comes to me and I don't take her side, she cries. She, I must support her. But uh, on a serious note, I don't know whether it's a question of whether parents have favorite children. For instance, as dads, as parents, we want children to to be better than us. We want them to work hard. And at the time when you guide them to work hard, to read, it sounds like we are unreasonable. But we only want what is best. So you'll find among the children, there are those who embraces 
that culture of hard work, that culture of discipline, and there's this child who decided to be haywire. So it's like, it's not necessarily having a favorite, but you have to be harder on who you have to be harder on based on behavior of the child. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Most it will be, do as I say, not as I do. You may not agree with it. The fact that in my life I may have made certain mistakes, I do not want my child to repeat my mistakes. I don't have to tell you to say don't do this because of one, two, three. But certainly when we say don't drink, we've got the experience that those things normally go wrong. But you know, I think with what you're saying, the hard thing about uh, do as I do, do as I have, do as, do as I, I say, say and not as I do mm. or like when you when they say don't drink I think that's not really teaching when you tell someone don't touch because you, you know when you tell someone don't touch the stove they're gonna go touch when they burn they'll be like oh that's why yeah. so like if it's just don't drink even though well that's an obvious one but yeah. there needs to be justification so you can really teach the lesson of why you shouldn't drink I think that's the hard part about when parents just say no and especially you know with me I'm very inquisitive and very curious I, I like to understand things i don't just take things as if you say don't do this i must understand why and it's not a question of your authority but it's so i can understand and really know why i'm doing or not doing a certain thing i think that's the hard thing about that one that's the, the educational grounding play a role uh find in the past the way we're culture the way we're educated it's like you don't ask you receive, you don't ask, you don't question. But if you look at the education now, your, your, your age group, you question, you are inquisitive, you want to know why, mm. why, why. So the, the, that part is also both ways. You also have a responsibility mm. as our children to educate us, to think things your way, to say, reason with me, walk with me. Mm. Also help your parents because there are times when I know certain things are wrong, but I may not be in a position to articulate the reasons very well. Mm. Uh, it doesn't mean if I can't, then you should just take it for granted to say, no, I've not been given a reason not to do this, I'll do it. Mm. Um, and I'm not, on the other hand, saying follow things blindly because as parents, we are also wrong. Mm. Uh, we also misread situation. Also, what worked in the past may not work now. Mm. Uh, so there's a level that we must recognize you as um, people who can think independently. Mm. Uh, what would make a man leave his wife and children? For me, only one thing can make a man leave his wife and not his children. Uh, so you, you put it together. Cheating only. Any other thing, you walk the, 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 the journey together. Um, you guide each other, you help each other. You are two different beings, you will see things differently. That's the strength, the diversity in your views. That's what makes you uh, a strong couple, a strong marriage. Um, your children, I don't see any reason, uh, any justification why any difference between parents should negatively uh, affect the children. Yes, emotionally when you differ, children will, but I, I will never see any reason why any rightful thinking dad will leave his children. Mm. But what about this thing where you have you have like a couple that's married, ne? Mm -hmm. they have children, then the man will leave his wife, but when he leaves the wife, he also leaves the kids, so he no longer takes that active father role he had anymore. He goes and has a new family with new kids where he, he's, he's, he's gonna be a dad with this new family. Is why, how is that possible for someone to just forget about those kids and be a dad to these new kids? There's a saying that says, a man loves his kids as much as he loves their mother. Hence, once he leaves the, the mom and things are bad, some men, not all men, some of them are able to just also leave those kids and start new ones. What's, what's behind that? Firstly, that saying I don't agree with. I don't know where it comes from, but I don't agree with. Mm. I think my, my background is that of a man whose grounding is godly. Mm. And uh, whose grounding is that you, you, you follow the right way as in the scriptures. And in, in, in that context, if you follow the godly principles, Firstly, leaving your wife 
shouldn't be something that comes easily mm. because leaving your wife is not godly i don't believe in divorce mm. while it happens I, it's not something that i think should happen willy-nilly I, I i will not even entertain it in my mind uh to find myself divorced with my wife it's i don't even think of it it's mm. it's also ungodly mm. uh, to find myself leaving the children which script is that? Mm. It's not possible. Mm. But it is something that we do see happen and what we're trying to investigate here is what is the thinking behind it? Are you able to... So from your perspective, maybe you know people who have... Or seen, I'm sure you've seen yeah, it happen yeah, where men yeah. leave their families. Are you able to compartmentalize maybe and convince yourself that those are not my kids or all they are kids or, or maybe you convince yourself that no like is it a, is that it are you able to put them in boxes in your head for you to be able to walk out let's put it this way where that has happened it doesn't end well mm, it doesn't where a man leaves his wife goes and cohabit somewhere it doesn't end well it it's it, it i can tell you it doesn't end well because it's not godly that man will go back to his family with a tail between his legs if it happens men, men do get excited men remain children forever they do get excited and it's out of that excitement that others can take as uh, eat further and leave their families mm. but where that happens it doesn't end well what happens when your daughter loves someone but you don't approve of the relationship that's the most difficult one. Um, I'm coming from a school where uh, we said status shouldn't affect your relationship, your background shouldn't affect your relationship. There's a case study when I met my wife, I was a nobody without a background. She was a nobody without a background. I mean, literally as poor as a mouse, but together, we were able to be where we are and have beautiful children who are taking over the world. And we can say, if the choice was influenced by any other thing other than love, it means my wife will not have married me. Mm. And I will not have married her. While I believe in that, uh, ask me if I will expect it from my daughter. No. I'm being honest. I don't expect my daughter to come to me and uh, with her education overseas and so on and so on and uh, come and show me someone who is just far apart. I expect her to socialize in her own level, uh, whether it's within the country or overseas, and I expect her to have a relationship at that level and marry at that level. Will I say who she must wear it? No, but I, I do expect that she must date and marry at that level. Uh, because there are many cases where there's been abuse. You find you here you are, you've got a master's doctorate degree and you pick someone without any grounding and there's envy and leads to gender violence and all those things. I'm scared. I'm scared. I I don't I, I won't imagine this to say my, my daughter must just bring anyone and I will say in the name of love I accept it. Why I have gone through it but I don't think I'll accept it. Mm. So if if it happens and you don't accept it, do you stop talking to me or do you just eventually if it's what I want and I insist, do you do you stop talking to me or do you just say ah, okay? Listen, don't come easily. I will really try to show you reasons. If it means I must spend more time with this potential date, so be it. I think I'll, I'll try to walk the path with you, mm. to reason with you. I won't give up easily. I won't give up easily. Of course, I will never uh, dump my daughter. It, that's not possible. But I will try as much as possible. Does a child who grows up with a single parent being a mom, is that child likely to have uh, father issues, daddy issues? Well, people differ. Uh, I've never known a father in my life. Um, my mother was a father figure. When I say my mother, it's someone who was completely illiterate. I was the last born. Um, literally, if you want the definition of poverty personified, that's me. 
But there's one thing that my mother taught me was right and wrong, pride in who I am and not wishing I'm somebody else that I'm as good as anyone else. Yes, people differ because the father figure, the guidance of the father figure may be there, but there are always father figures elsewhere at school, in society, and so on and so on. So I wouldn't necessarily say automatically a child who grows without a father figure may have father figure issues. In fact, it can produce the opposite, a fighting spirit. And I'm one, that living example where I said, I'll show that I'm not a victim of my background. Well, in my opinion, I think that um, it's true that people differ and it's really about how you choose to react to your situation. So for instance, um, you find that someone has a dad who's abusive. They're tend to be two types of people yeah. the one who will follow and be abusive also or the one who says i will never yes. do that because of what my father has done now in terms of having an absent dad i think that there's no way it cannot affect you because even in you choosing to be a certain person it's because of the effect of oh so this person left me i'm going to prove yes. that i'm something yes. so yes, it, yes. you, you yes. do have some kind of issue and i think that every person needs to be honest with themselves and look into themselves and say how has it affected me that i did not have a father figure women and men both need father figures as a woman when you go and start uh, dating you look at your dad how he's treated your mom and you mold it off of that have you ever heard the saying that uh, you date your father or you, girls end up looking for men like their dads so when you don't have a dad you don't have that reference point you don't know what to look for in a man you can't go to your dad and say if a man does this or you know you can't get that advice you know and you don't have anything to to really uh, stand on and that's and it's not it's not unfixable it's not a problem you just have to look within yourself see how it's affected you and then go about correcting it like my dad said there are plenty of other figures out there it doesn't have to be your dad if he's not around it can be an uncle it can be a brother it can be a, a pastor but you do have to acknowledge what it has done to you for instance also some people who don't have dads tend to look for father figures in boyfriends and husbands even men need a father figure because you need to learn your mother cannot teach you how to be a man the way a man can teach you how to be a man your mother can teach you how to be a respectful person and she can teach you what she can about manhood but she can never from a man's perspective and she can never relate to you a hundred percent like a man because she's not a man same thing applies for uh, for men men cannot my dad can teach me as best as he can how to be a woman right but he'll never be a woman and he'll never understand the depths of of what it means though he can try so i do think there is an effect to not having that figure and it is something that you need to look into to heal i will also share with you that you can live under the shadow of your parents don't victimize yourself out of the circumstances you find yourself in and if i use that reference point and i use it as someone who grew up under a single mom i cannot in my life for my indiscretions for my poor judgment keep on blaming my parents i should take responsibility for my own life for my own decisions how many cows do you want for me the cows that i want for my daughter the only daughter um can't be counted it can't be counted my daughter is priceless and therefore i cannot put any price on my daughter i cannot put any number of cars on my daughter she's priceless <laughs> so in short whoever gets married to my daughter you are not buying my daughter Mm. You have a companion, you have a friend. How um, we are, me and my wife are raising my daughter. We're raising our daughter and our sons to be independent. My daughter, I raise her that she's not going to go to a man for survival. She's not going to go to a man to get a car. She's not going to get a man to buy her, her style clothes. No, she can take care of that. She will get a man for a companion, for a brand, and for that, there's no price. So guys, that's all the questions that we've got for today. I hope you guys like this video and I hope you like meeting my dad. If you'd like to see him on my channel again, comment down below. And
And yeah, I hope you guys learned from this. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you'd like to see another video like this, also let me know. But that's it for today, guys. I hope you liked this video. Don't forget to comment, like, share, and subscribe. And I will be back with more Subscribe. <laughs> subscribe. We want to hit 100,000. Yes, sir. Subscribe. Yes, sir. Peace and love, guys.